This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And this is the show where we talk to people in and around and at least adjacent to independent professional wrestling. And we're going to have a fun, an international edition, if you will, today. We're going to have a lot of fun with our guests in a moment. But in the meantime, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or IndieWrestling.us for your Indie Mayhem Show and other wrestling goodness. Please subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on your iTunes, Citrus, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and, of course, the Google Play Music and the video versions on Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page. And keep an eye out there on the Indie uh, Wrestling.us and Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebooks for event announcements on people that we might be talking with. So you can join us here in the chats on Facebook Live, uh, just like our friends uh, <laughs> Wheels and Alex Cars and Alex Miller, both from the West Coast, and Tina Keys uh, hanging out with us right now. What's up, Matt Carlin's Bobby F. J. Town, and producer Missy's hanging out in there, too. Uh, but like I said, we have a bit of an international guest joining us today, somebody I've been uh, uh, enjoying his dancing in the IWC and Rise Wrestling. He's part of Golden Chic International. He is uh, Mambo Italiano joining us here today. How you doing today, Mambo? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. So, so first of all, first of all, uh, we'd like to have a little bit of an icebreaker for people. Okay. Uh, so they can get to know you if they're being introduced to you here, of course. This is indie wrestling. You never know. Uh, what is your earliest uh, memory of professional wrestling? My oath. It was maybe, I don't remember the year, mm-hmm. honestly, but was like when I saw the first time wrestling. In Italy, it's not that popular. It came on national TV where there was the era about Eddie Guerrero and Remy Siro in tag team. Mm-hmm. This one when the wrestling become really popular in Italy. And when I start to love this show. So it was I, I every time I remember about it, I just switched the channel and it come out it was Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, SmackDown Tag Team Champions together in the T V and from this moment start to Wow, that's awesome. Watch, yes. That's awesome. So, so like in Italy, is it is it mostly WWE? Are there other promotions? Is there is there even an independent wrestling scene over there? There is a lot of independent wrestling. Mm-hmm. When I started wrestling in 2011, there was kind of bad. Mm-hmm. Right now, is good. I won't say it's good. So, not all promotion is good. I think like in every part of the world, but two mm-hmm. free promotion work really good with a lot of European talents who they usually call some special guests like xww2 so right now two free promotion are really good okay okay that's awesome so what is you know when you saw that at first what were you uh interested right off the bat to become a professional wrestler yourself when uh like when yeah when did you decide like hey i think that's a thing i want to get in there and do it was in 2010 in 2010, I start to to follow after I've been 18 years old. I start to check some wrestling school around my area, and I was lucky because in that year, there is there isn't too much wrestling academy, especially in Italy. And I, I found one really close to me it was like 35 minutes by car, so well, I was really lucky. I know mm-hmm. a lot of my friends went f- from some place close to me and they need to drive like two or three hours for go to training once or twice a week so i think it was bad i I mean if i had to drive like three hours maybe i never started a little 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 bit more to it yeah i think i don't know if i never started maybe this time um so so getting into it like what are the crowds like there um kind of compared to what you see here in America. Like, are, are they as rabid of fans? Are they more so? Like, like how, you know, what are, the, what are they like? It depends where you're working. So I think the most of the part of the show are occasionally crowds. So mm-hmm. sometimes they are a lot of involved in, sometimes they are not really. But basically, it's, 
it's a good crowd too. So I don't mm. want to say it's bad. Awesome. So so tell me a little bit about um, coming to America. Uh, like when uh, you know when we see typically a a foreign you know character in the ring. Yeah. Uh, I, I was a little surprised when. Um, the accent continued when I talked to you afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's not usual. We get a Russian character and they're Russian, you know, yes. and, and things like that. I know you really promote yourself as a real Italian, you know. Yeah, I, I like play around that because it's real. I'm Italian, a real uh-huh. Italian, and I think can be something too different for the crowd, for the promoter, for everything is joined in the show. Mm-hmm. And I like prayer around that things. So a lot of people don't believe in me. So they say, oh, no, you are not Italian because they know, you know, some people say yeah, they have the Russian character or wh- yeah. every part of the world, but they are still American. So do they do they think even even after you're in the ring and and everything that you're still like being a pretend Italian? Yeah, because maybe they think <laughs> you you use this accent mm-hmm. for, for just for the show, but mm-hmm. so but you do that for just for the show, so it's not really your my accent. So and yeah, a lot of people say to me, "Am I you're really Italian?" No, you're not. They say, "Yeah." But <laughs> Just tell them you're Dutch or something. Yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, I'm German. Uh, <laughs> well, tell me about that transition. So did you, um, and you don't have to get too deep if it's something else, but it, were you motivated to come to America for the wrestling opportunities uh, in general, or did that just kind of tag along with other opportunities you had? So my my idea was came here for wrestling. So in mm-hmm. Italy, I, I already told you, two or three promotions start to work good now, but I yeah. mean, you don't have like... Any so the big promotion never take the eyes on Italy to try to have some tryout, try to take this the big steps over some big promotion. So I decide uh, WWE is not hiring a lot of Italians these days. No, no. Yeah. So if you see the the last real Italian I think was Bruno San Martino. Yeah, yeah. I think because I think one. I think Santino Morello was a fake Italian, right? He's can <laughs> yeah, he's Canadian. He's Canadian. But yeah, uh, they never took the eye so they they yeah. don't they don't have a, like italy in their radar to see mm-hmm. some new talent so for that i, I decide to move here to, to have to have to try to have my chance bobby fj town is in the uh, chat room and he's asking how did you end up in the pittsburgh area of all places because for came from europe so you need to got a work visa mm-hmm, of, of course, course. And I found my re- real job, mm-hmm. my real work in Pittsburgh. And mm-hmm. so it was like a coincidence. So I, I didn't decide Pittsburgh. It was the destiny. Was it a little bit of a bonus to uh, uh, end up in the hometown of another real Italian of Bruno San Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, when I say that, see, maybe some future point. So they tell me, hey. One day. One, one day, day. Maybe. <laughs> Never know. You never know. It's not, it's not hard I to think, run into him in this town. So. Yeah, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, well, tell me a little bit about that transition too. Um, you know, were you, you know, was, was it you, the first thing you were just looking for promotions to work with? So when I started to move myself from Italy to here in America, it was the first time in 2015 when mm-hmm. I went to the Landstorm Academy in Canada. No. Because oh, so you're a Landstorm graduate as well. Yes. Okay. And because I, I say, I, I think if I want go and try to have my chance, I need to got a real professional training so i decided to went there with one of my friend one another italian guy stefano say hi stefano <laughs> <laughs> and uh nothing this was the the first point and after that i think no i this is what i won't do in my life so mm-hmm. and in 2016 i got three months work visa in texas when i trained in booker t academy just for three months because this was my work visa for three months. So you've already been to the Landstorm Academy and the Booker T Academy. Yes. So yes. you're like doing the like like Star Academy tour at this <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and, and after that, so I, I I still work around for the work visa because for three months every time is too less time. So you don't mm-hmm. have time and chance to try to share your face. And finally, I... I got this two years work visa here in Pittsburgh. Wow, and awesome. here I am. And you land, of course, with Rise Wrestling here uh, with a Y. I have to point that out. Uh, and, uh, and and the IWC. Yes, yes. I start to work with them, yes. Okay, okay. I, 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 I training on the IWC with mm-hmm. Chris, yes. Awesome. Awesome. Just another. I, I know, so you you got like the you got a pretty interesting resume of uh, of, 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 of training, training yes, going yeah. on here. So 
Um, and how many years have you been wrestling? It was from 2011, okay. but I don't want to consider it the like the first three, four years because yeah. I already told you it was kind of bad, not really good training. And in the first two years when I started, the wrestling wasn't popular in Italy. So in two years, I had like free match in yeah, two yeah. years. So yeah, I don't yeah. want to count like the first. I, I won't count like for real with professional training. I was from when I, when I went to Landstorm Academy. I won't okay. consider like real career so i think the, the years before was kind of eh, okay experience tell me a little bit about you know of course uh, there's many ways we can represent a, an italian wrestler in wrestling right yes uh how did we land on what is uh well first tell tell the people that maybe haven't seen you in action who is Mambo Italiano as a, as a, as a person? Mambo Italiano is the best wrestling dancer of, in the world, of course. <laughs> and the idea of this character was born for joke mm -hmm. when we was in Landstorm Academy. We did the, the training match and one guy started singing the, the Mambo Italiano song without any reason. And I start to dance, that just to play. And at the end of the match, Landstorm told me, so why you don't, you don't try this character? So mm -hmm. can... can can work maybe then the only option you know for know if work or no is try with try it with the crowd i tried and yet work and here i am <laughs> and it's been interesting to see that kind of grow into like being a part of the the golden chic international with uh guys like calvin couture who i hear is a really nice guy who may or may not be in this room yeah. uh <laughs> and other guys as well uh and tell me about how how does mambo kind of fit into those those groups like that in the in the fashion show yes and rice wrestling uh they called me out like for model for mm -hmm. show some <laughs> dress the side from calvi couture of course uh -huh. and i helped them to beat up the system late okay okay awesome awesome and this was how i can entrance in the golden Chic international um, you've been at this for a little bit here in the area. Um, geez, I think I saw your first match. Was that a Clearfield show maybe last year? Uh, no, it was in uh, Wheeling. In the in in Wheeling, the yes. Yeah, in the casino yes. show, yes. Yes. Um, With IWC, yeah. Um, how have you been kind of adjusting to the uh, uh, American crowds, I guess? I think for... I don't want to say it was easy but for me for my character mm -hmm. i just go out and say something too bad to the american people and they of course they hate me because i'm not american and yeah 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 and that's it so i i had i don't want to say it, it was easy but yeah. it wasn't that bad so yeah. i i i have like a i had my double check about my character is can work good here mm -hmm. Where do you want to see, um, and I don't know if Mambo is the thing you want to do like uh, forever, but where do you see like Mambo kind of going down the line for you? Where do you want to see him kind of develop into? I don't want to think, I, I don't know. I, I try every time to go over step by step. Mm -hmm. And of course, my dream, I think like every professional wrestler is the WWE. Of course. But one wrestler, every a thousand are right there. So I don't want to say... Mm -hmm nothing to too much I, I i just try to do my best every day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. excellent um so what is what is the uh the the best and worst thing about um about indie wrestling for you so far sometimes about a lot not all wrestler they are like training Mm -hmm. So in some promotion, especially, you can find some backyard wrestler. And so you won't try to shake your face. Maybe you, you try to get more booking, but sometimes you have some guys when you can injure yourselves. And so sometimes that is the things I don't really like it about that, mm -hmm. honestly. Okay. Well, what's the best of it? The best? Yes. The best is when you work in the good indie promotion of wrestling and other promoters say you and the they give you good advice they call you so and try to share your face for go step by step over the best way mm -hmm. we talked about your kind of uh, uh interesting pedigree for uh your your training schools okay um but and we talked about this on wrestling mayhem show but i want to make sure it's here for those that, that may be uh just listening to the indie mayhem show you recently had an experience with a wrestling legend 
Yeah. That uh, may have interrupted your dancing and singing a few months ago. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it was the guy in the cover of your show today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, like right the, he's, he's actually peeking over your shoulder there a little bit as the honky yeah, talk man. He, <laughs> he punched me. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really good experience. So it was really, really fun and mm -hmm. important for me. Mm -hmm. Work have a, a time with him in the ring. So it was really, really, really good time. Uh, is there, um, you, you know, your your kind of wrestling exposure started with that, you know, like you said, the Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio era of WWE. Yes. Is there, you know, uh, um, a lot of that awareness? Like, did you go back and see the Honky Tonk Mans and the Hulk Hogan's and yes. guys like that? Yes, like, of there's course. a lot of kind of like study back for something like that? Yes, of course. I did that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So that, that's great. Uh, well, at least he didn't get hit by a guitar. I don't think that happened, right? You just no, got to shake, rattle, right and roll that yes, night. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and serenaded, yeah. of course. Yeah, I was. I was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so anything that you're watching these days that uh, any wrestlers out there that kind of got your attention or are there any other promotions or anything that uh, you kind of keep an eye on for um, inspiration? I try a lot of inspiration from a lot of WWE wrestlers, honestly. Mm. So I think that WWE is the best promotion and try to keep everything from there. Mm -hmm. And and you're you're more of a because uh, I've we've we talked about this a lot like recently. We've noticed this in IWC with a lot of the guys that we've interviewed, especially the newer talent, because um, you don't see a lot of the big characters yeah. as much anymore. And you, I think you represent that very well. I try to be different, so I know I'm not like that muscle guy or mm -hmm. super taller. So I try to be different with my character. So too, I think in, a, in every show, like on the movie, so there is like the big guy, the bad guy, the strong guy, and there is like the the fun guy too. So mm -hmm. I try to work hard to be that type of wrestler. So because. You don't see too much that type of wrestler in some roster, in some in every roster. So it mm. can be like a different and can be can can make me more chance to get a new show. Okay, outside of wrestling, because I think you know you have a you have a pretty cool story coming over here and doing this. What's the best part about coming over to America? Ooh, I think it's every day is an adventure mm -hmm. and Calvin Couture said me he is the best adventure but <laughs> 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 everything is new everything is I, I won't say everything I did I, is an adventure every day new promotion mm -hmm. new people so I came here alone by myself I didn't know no one so it wasn't easier from the start like start to meet the people start to meet the promoter start start everything mm -hmm. here so but step by step that's awesome well, it's been fun to see you uh, over the last couple of months uh, doing some great things in a couple of promotions here. I'm looking forward to see what you're doing. Good luck with everything, of course. Thank you. Uh, where can people find you online? They can find me. I'm really, I really use a lot Instagram. They can find me with Mambo Italiano Wrestling or in Twitter with A Mambo is my name, but I don't really use too much Twitter. And But basically, yeah, on Instagram, Mambo Italiano Wrestling. There you go. Go check it out. And, of course, you can check out Mambo Italiano as part of IndieWrestling.us. A lot of your matches on there with uh, several promotions, of course. Uh, and uh, check them out at your local show, uh, When Rise Wrestling or IWC comes to your town. And uh, keep an eye up on there and PittsburghWrestling.com for those dates as well. Thank you so much for joining us. And, and please, everybody out there, uh, uh, support guys like Mambo that are, are really, I mean, you took a big leap for, for uh, your dream here with professional wrestling. And, uh, and it's really cool to see that. And I wish you all the luck and everything. Thank you very so, much. So please support Real Italians and independent wrestling. And in general, of course, please support indie wrestling. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.